Before I did the overload C out, which I'm going over, I want to go over one that's actually really important because actually a, a friend of mine, Dr. Chang, uh, and I were doing some C++ stuff, and we noticed that if we didn't overload the assignment operator or the equal operator, there were some catastrophic issues that happened down the road. This is an alternative to the copy constructor, but to be very frank, this is making sure that we are not just creating two objects, but that their values are distinct. So for at one time, they are similar, but if we change one, it doesn't reflect or hurt the other one. They are they're two separate identities from here on out, and this code makes sure of that. So that's why this one is super important. Now the overall construction of this is, well, a little bit on the interesting side. Let's put it that way. In the header, you would have, yes, that is an ampersand, an operator, because we're accessing and changing the left-hand side of the equal operator, and we're giving it the right-hand side as a source. Now, this will explain a little bit more in depth of what's going on here is that we are going to be returning a student from this particular function. So notice there is the word return right here. And it's going to return a pointer to this new student that's having values copied into it and then on its own. Now, inside, I'm going to go over the return this part here for a moment. So bear with me, just skip this one for a second. Here it's just copying the values over from your source into our current left side student, whoever that is. In this particular case down the, down the code here, we have Kim equals Lupoli. Lupoli's material is going to go into Kim's. So we're setting that for each data member to be added in to our newest instance that we're being assigned to. Now, by the way, Back in the code here, notice Lupola was already established. Kim was not. And here we can use the equal sign to go ahead and then assign Kim va values later. So again, you're used to equal sign. Here it knows we, what we're doing. We are overloading the equal sign. The usual overload for equal sign is great for integers, floats, but it would have no idea what to do with two objects of students until bam. That, that is our overloaded function to handle two students that are on each side of the equal sign. Again, bear with me on that one. We'll go over that here in a moment. All it's doing is copying values from our source into our new instance, and it is returning our instance from there. So here's the nice part. For your container, what you're about to do here in a moment, you can copy and paste this. Yes, there's going to be some changes. Yes, you're going to change student to container. Yes, you're going to change some overall items here because you're not copying over test scores. But the overall structure is exactly the same. So yeah, have at it. Copy and paste and change it for container. That's basically what I'm asking you to do here. So work on this part. Don't make it overly crazy. And by the way, I tell you, this block goes into the source. This block goes into the header. Here's how we would create an instance of it in the main, if we're, we're out if we wanted, but still. So go ahead and start working on the exercises that I have for you here down the bottom, and we'll go over and answer here in a bit. So the first part, let me answer one and two, which actually comes from here. Number one, from the code above in the main, which is the source, Kim or Lupoli? It all is actually about position because of all things, if that line right there of Kim equals Lupoli happened to be swapped and it was Lupoli equals Kim, that makes a massive difference. So this is really important. 
So the equal sign is, frankly, the, the most important part. What is on the left-hand side and what is on the right-hand side of the equal sign? That actually matches here in the function. There is a left-hand side of the equal sign. In this case, it would be Kim. And then there's going to be a right-hand side of the equal sign, which happens to be Lupoli. So Lupoli is going to be the source when it comes to this particular problem that we have here. Number two, within the overload of function, this represents who and then. So this is a really neat problem. I could have used this with that arrow for every one of these. I only did it for one, just to kind of show you a heads up about it. To be very honest with you, I use this to make sure, I'm dyslexic, as I'm sure you've known before, so I'll whip things, things around, wow. Anyway, this is going to be Kim. How do I know that? Because notice it says source.test. So I'm grabbing source, and you know that's Lupoli, and I'm going to dump it into this particular instance, whatever it is, of test one. And I'm returning this. So Kim is going to be the one that is changed out of all this. So that's why I'm, ret I'm returning a new pointer. So hey, here's the updated values of Kim. I've copied off of somewhere else and go from there. Again, I could have used this for every single one of those lines. I didn't, but I wanted to give you a heads up on that. Now, the rest of it, I'll show you the code here in a second. So my answer to this is a little dark, but wasn't intentional at first, and then I thought it was funny. But anyway, create the overload for the equal container, and here it is. Now, notice, by the way, like I said, did I honestly copy and paste it from student and make it in the container with my data members? Yep. Yes, I did. I can honestly tell you I copied and pasted it. Changed it from student to container. I left this block, which I'm going over in a minute, so bear with me here. But notice how my data members are set up and copied over is exactly the same. But yeah, it's max storage and test, test instead of test one, test two, and all that stuff. I just copied and pasted it. But yeah, that's, that's literally it. Now, positioning, I had to be careful about. This goes in the source. Yes, I need the header in the prototype. It should be in the uh, header file. You know, how I call it, well, here's how I call it here. So <clears throat> here's my fish tank again. You saw it before. Here is my, well, container of toilet because my daughter threw Barbies into the fish tank and they all died. But anyway, fish tank is copying its data over to toilet. So toilet's going to have the same 30 gallons, well, sorry, Container 30, well, you know what? That's interesting. Can, 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 I hope your toilet doesn't hold 30 gallons. But anyway, that's something that I should fix or could fix after I made the copy. It's about to hold 28 gallons because all of it gets poured and won't overflow. It'll, but anyway, all those fishies are going into the toilet, and you better not mix anything with that. But anyway, how to display it? Yep, we would do our C out when it came to just like our normal thing without overloading the C out yet. We'd have to do it the long way, but that would end up working for our particular grim example.